If it didn't exist, I would have invented it. I didn't know it existed. Yes, you do. There will be consequences. Follow the signs. And it might surprise some of you. What are the worst things about living in Australia? Hello, <laughs> welcome back to another video. This video is for anyone interested in moving to Australia or anyone still wondering if Australia is a good place for them or not. I migrated here now over seven years ago. What were the most surprising cultural differences experienced when I first moved here? Coming from France, a place where things often have a more formal tone, discovering the easygoing lifestyle that this country offers was pleasantly surprising. Now saying that it did take me three months to feel and find myself really comfortable. Keep in mind that English isn't my first language so if it is yours it'll definitely help massively to you know adapt yourself into this country. Are Australians friendly with immigrants? Honestly in my experience absolutely. Depending on where you're going if we're talking Sydney or Melbourne those major cities it is so diverse full of different ethnicities. Also remember that 50% of nationals had one of their parents born somewhere else. It's quite a young country so in Australia if you've been here for a few years and have the intention to come to Australia to move here permanently people will just say okay that's it you're Aussie. It's really a thing and I absolutely love that. People now when I tell them I've been here for seven years they're like oh okay you're pretty much Aussie now. Now I think the hardest part about all of it is making Aussie friends but that'd be the only thing. How does the Australian lifestyle differ from other countries? I would say that in Australia people live in a way more relaxed lifestyle than in most countries. They like to take things slow, easy and absolutely adore the outdoors. You can feel that everything was built in Australia to spend as much time as possible outside and that when the weather is not great then you don't see anyone in the streets. It's all about outdoor activities, adventure, landscapes, nature and that's something that I absolutely adore when I moved here. Australians to me seem quite happy on a daily basis, quite content. I haven't felt the stress or the fear that I have seen in other countries and you're quickly quite impacted by that friendliness and that easygoing life because it puts you in that mood as well. You just want to join the ride and be happy in contact with what you have. What options do you have to find affordable places to rent in Australia and how do you find them? When it comes to rental properties it's like anywhere in the world. It will all depends on your situation, your budget, how many people you are and what you're looking for as well. At the moment I know that the rental market is absolutely insane. If you are on your own, you're working full-time, you might not find it super difficult to find a place because you're on your own, there are so many different options for you to rent a room, share a room with someone, live with people or even live on your own with a studio. It all depends on where you wish to live, how much you have to spend and what's the most important to you. If you just want want a small place, easy to look after and then what matters for you is the surroundings. But I wouldn't say that it's hard because there are so many options between Gumtree, Facebook groups, realestate.com as well and the one website that I have used is called Flatmates. Flatmates is honestly if it didn't exist, I would have invented it. It is so smartly made. It gives you all different options for you to pick from. And honestly, I haven't seen anyone struggling finding a place with flatmates. How expensive is Australia? I would say that it all depends on how you approach the question. Because obviously if you're on your own, you have others to look after, the answer will be completely different. If you are on your own or with a significant other, I personally feel like Australia isn't as expensive as what some people might say. When you think of the national minimum wage being of $23.23 as of the 1st of July 2023, it's pretty good. When I first came here, it was at $17.70. We've gone up quite a lot, like by 30% at least. And I wouldn't say that everything else has increased that much. Yes, the rental market has increased, but you can still find yourself in a position where you can manage quite easily. $23.23 is about $882 per week. If you have someone with you and you're sharing rent, you're most likely gonna be having enough money to live. Now, this is with the minimum wage, really, really minimum. $700 isn't even the minimum wage because that would be paying a lot of taxes for what 
you earn. Let's say your rent is at $500 per week. You are two people. You spend $250 each. You still have $450 left for you to spend on yourself. Let's say you have a $200 budget for groceries, which is a lot per person, I believe. I've always been working around like 100, 150 maximum per week. So 200 would be like, you'd live well. You'd still have plenty left for you to pay other little things. And that would be without saving any money if really you wanted to spend it all. But if you are quite on the budget and you're being careful because you're not earning that much, you could still go out to a restaurant once a week easily and save money. That's that's my approach to it. Now again, it's all about your situation, how much you're making, and if you have to look after anyone else but yourself. Is the mullet haircut really a thing in Australia? And that one is just so funny because it definitely is. I had never heard of the mullet when I first moved to Australia. Keep in mind that I was young. I was only 18 years old when I moved. I didn't know it existed. And that is just so funny that it exists and that it is popular. Now, it is not as common as what I think it used to be. I would say that most amount of people I've seen with a mullet were teenagers. I think it's super popular amongst younger people. And I can tell you, yes, when they wear it, they love it. <laughs> they are very proud of it. How efficient and accessible is public transportation in Australia? <laughs> so remember, Australia is quite a relatively young country and more importantly, giant. In Sydney, public transport is great. It will take you some time to get to some places if you don't have a car, but you can still make it to most places. Within the city, it's fairly reasonable. Today, they also have the tram in Sydney, for example. Melbourne is quite good. Brisbane is quite good. In Cairns, the buses are good. You don't have any trains, but in between the cities and the suburbs, it's not always great. And also the service is usually not offered for that long. If you wish to use public transport, like at night, for example, go anywhere after midnight it might be very difficult depending on how far you live from the place that you wish to go to now public transport in my opinion cost quite a lot of money there's no option for a pass where you can have unlimited amount of trips it doesn't exist yet if you're really using public transport every single day like in sydney for example you're looking at spending 50 dollars a week in public transport a month that's quite a lot in my opinion do you need a driver's license in australia Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. And if you don't have one, you need to be living with someone that has one or be ready to really not have much time for yourself anywhere you go. Australia is a very, very big country. And even when you are close to cities, you're looking at commute that take a lot of time, like I just previously mentioned. So you want a car, it's no brainer. It's something that I had never even sort of getting like when I was living in Paris until I came to Australia. And I was like, okay, there was no way I'm gonna be able to live normally with are having a driver's license so i would definitely say if you want to have the best time that you can have in australia and make the most out of it you need a car it's the best way to you know go around whether it's to travel to commute to work or on your own personal time it's just much much more easier what are my favorite australian dishes the number one, and it might surprise some of you, but it's actually Koblov. <laughs> I don't know why, I can't explain it. Koblov is delicious. I love it. It's so good, so tasty, filled with like a creamy mixture, typically made with sour cream, cream cheese, corn, seasoning, bacon, onions, cheese, cheese, cheese. Okay, maybe I am a little bit biased and I love it because it's cheese, cheese, cheese and bread. Oh my God, I am a cliche. I don't like it. I don't like it at all, but it's delicious. And I love it. Now, I also really, really like caramel slices. It's delicious. Lamingtons, I've discovered that. I love coconut, love chocolate, a good old sausage roll. Fish and chips as well in Australia is excellent. Honestly, oh, I love fish and chips here. You don't always have to have it battered. You can have it also grilled. And they have a fair good amount of great fish in Australia, like barramundi, snapper. Oh, beautiful. How quickly can you work when you come to Australia? Well, it will all depend on the visa that you have. If your visa allows you to work, you are allowed to work from the moment you arrive in Australia and that it is past that grand notification date. Now, to start working, you will have to apply for a TFN, which is the tax file number, if you wish to work for others as an employee and where the taxes are being taken care of. 
So to do so, you'll have to apply via the ATO website, which is the Australian Taxation Office. It's fairly easy to apply. It is also free and you usually get it within a couple of days. And then from the moment you have that, give it to your future employers. Now, to be able to apply for that, you will need to have a bank account, a local SIM card, an address. If you wish to work for yourself or have your own business, then you will need to apply for what it's called an ABN, an Australian business number. But this time you need to apply on the ABR website, which corresponds to the Australian business register. Again, it's free to apply for anyone either working as its own business, sole trader, partnership, offering your own service. The ABN is what you need. And then in this case, once you lodge your taxes at the end of the financial year, pay your taxes according to your income. How hard is it to find a job in Australia? Not hard at all. Honestly, not hard at all. It's probably one of the best countries if you just wish to work. If you're a hard worker and all you want is to make money, this is the place to be, honestly. In Australia, there are so many fields that are looking for people constantly on a daily basis. And I have never struggled more than maybe, what, a month to find a job. And that was when I was looking for a permanent role with a contract and all of that. A month. But other than that, honestly, a couple of days, a couple of weeks maybe, that will be top. And that's regardless, I think, of your age and what you've done before. If you want to work, you can work. That's how I feel. Don't hesitate. There are multiple ways to find jobs. Obviously, you can look via Gumtree. It's uh, really good to join, for example, Facebook groups that are about your community in this country. Like, for example, French in Sydney called Les Français à Sydney. It's perfect because people that are here that have experienced exactly what you've experienced will be there to answer your questions. But you also have the two main websites that are indeed.com, sick.com.au. Honestly, I've never struggled. If you have nothing that prevents you from working, then you should be able to work. That's really how I see it. And I've worked in several different industries. If you really want to work again, you can work. Australia, is it really dangerous? Look, in general, Australia is a pretty safe country. I find it safe. I feel safe. As a woman in my 20s, I feel extremely safe in Australia. There is a very low rate of violent crime. There are some rules and regulations that make it such a safe country where people don't want to mess up. People know that to anything you do, there will be consequences. And I absolutely love that because honestly, that's what makes it super, super safe. Now, there are potential risks, extreme weather or wildlife encounters, I'm going to say precautions can help ensure a safe and enjoyable experience. Is it safe to swim anywhere in Australia? Look, no, it's not safe to swim anywhere in Australia. It's generally safe to swim. Now, it's important to be aware of potential risks. Some beaches may have strong currents, rough surf, or marine creatures like sharks or jellyfish that could pose a danger. So always swim between the flags on all the patrolled beaches. There are many, many beaches that are patrolled with lifeguards. Just try to swim where you're being told to swim attention to the signs. In Australia, it's super, super well developed when it comes to that. Everywhere you go, there's going to be signs telling you these are the potential risks that you might encounter or take by swimming here. Be cautious of this, this, this. Follow the signs. Honestly, if you follow the signs and you're being cautious, then you should be fine. There are other options than just the wide, wide ocean. If you're a little bit scared of the ocean, go swim in creeks where the water is a little bit more shallow, where you can see things more clearly. Also, in Sydney, there are a lot of rock pools. Rock pools are amazing. They're basically pools that are built into the ocean, but you are fully fenced and protected. One thing that I absolutely adore as well that you can find in cities like Cairns, Brisbane, Early Beach, it's pools that have been built, but they look like a little oasis. They've been built because there's not so many areas to swim around or because it's not so safe to swim around. They make those infrastructures for residents to be able to still swim because let's be honest, it's super, super hot in summer. You need to give something to people. What is the best thing about living in Australia? Quality of life. <laughs> Honestly, that's the one thing that comes to my mind. 
From stunning natural landscapes to vibrant cities, Australia honestly offers such a diverse range of experiences and opportunities. The country's laid-back lifestyle, the rich cultural diversity, being able to access so many different foods from around the world, and obviously the outdoor lifestyle, which I really personally adore. It just makes this country a great place to live in, plus safety. Safety is such a high point up there, love it. It is a rewarding place to go home. Now, a lot of great positive things, but what are the worst things about living in Australia? Look, Australia is very isolated. It's an island, it's a continent on its own, yes, but it's an island quite remote from the rest of the world. It's close to Southeast Asia, New Zealand, and a couple of Pacific Islands. But in general, you feel quite isolated because it requires you to spend quite a fair bit amount of money if you wish to travel anywhere else. Because it's so big in remote and rural areas, you don't always have access to the same amount of opportunities and services. It's not gonna be equally shared throughout Australia. Living in Australia can sometimes be a little bit hard, especially if you live far away from cities. That, that's how I feel. It usually means that some people might not get the same amount of help or the same amount of chances. It is also so big that you have to expect a lot of driving to commute anyway. It consumes a lot of your time. You have to plan ahead. Saying you have to drive an hour to go somewhere feels like nothing today. Like if on the weekend that's the amount of driving you do, that is considered as nothing in Australia. And it changes your point of view on things as well. It makes you appreciate a little bit more when you don't have to commute that far. And I would say because the domestic airfares are quite expensive, like honestly they're super pricey for what they are when you think that you could sometimes go overseas for cheaper. I would say don't expect if you're on a budget that you will be traveling around Australia and see so much of Australia that often because honestly it's it's expensive. So keep in mind if you can drive within two three hours especially if you're on the coast you will have plenty to discover so many things to see and the landscapes really are priceless. Now that's if you don't mind driving. And if you can. In conclusion, what advice do I have to anyone wanting to move to Australia? Australia, again, is a vast and diverse country. So I would recommend you to really take the time to explore different cities and regions to find the best place for you. You want a place that's gonna resonate with what you cherish the most and maybe be part of a social activity, join some Facebook groups. Don't hesitate to put yourself out there because you are not alone. There are so many people moving to Australia every single day. You can feel lonely at times, but remember that you are not alone feeling that way. So really don't hesitate to even do it way in advance. Join some social groups and say, I will be moving in Australia in two months around that area. Is there anyone there? And a lot of people will be more than happy on those groups to welcome you, help you. I think I have pretty much covered all of the questions that I think the world has about living in Australia. Now, if you have any more questions than that, please feel free to put them down in the comment section. I'll be more than happy to try my best to answer to most of them, if not all. Again, most of these questions have been answered based on my own personal experience and the things that I know. Now, really just take it based on, it is for my opinion, as a French person who moved here when she was 18. Bye-bye, <laughs> see you next time.